to Friday, where my co-hosts are inclusive of Grasha Maengi, where we do it with her on Wednesdays. There is Stephanie Ayeta. By the way, little Stephanie may to away with. I'd be mad, but you're so sweet, so it's fine. So compliment. Stephanie Eta on Mondays and Tuesdays with one Brian Saka. And of course, Thursday with me. And Friday, Social Friday, where I'm with one Masai KTA and our DJ. They usually vary, but it's not one at Yes, and we're a bad team. Very, very bad team. You should tune. Monday all the way to Friday, 7 all the way till 10 in the morning. Now we've come to the almost end. <laughs> but I think it's the most important part of the day because we're going to talk about things that, well, social issues, health issues, issues generally, but we design them certainly for ladies. However, they are not limited to. So if you're a gent and you want to participate, you know what to do on our socials. Yes. Now let me allow the lovely ladies to introduce themselves. Hi, good morning. 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 How are you? Yes. Yeah, how do you want it? Good morning, Lisa. How are you? Um, I'm fine, thank uh -huh. you. Please tell us your lovely name. <laughs> Oops. Um, uh -huh. My name is Lisa Olo. Uh -huh. I'm the executive director and the founder of Jadida Olo Foundation. Uh -huh. I'm also a nursing student, currently undertaking a bachelor's degree in nursing at uh, Mount Kenya University. Mm -hmm. I am a menstrual health enthusiast and I'm also um, interested in matters men uh, of uh, reproductive health. Mm -hmm. Yes. I want to be you when I grow up. Now I'm to I'm a CEO and founder. <laughs> yeah? yeah, 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 yeah. What have I founded? To see in there, it's very early in the morning. and. Hey, <laughs> the recipe <laughs> I borrow. <laughs> hey, unless the mashakura, the ones you just shui shui shui. Anyway, it's fine. Ni, ni god, ni god. Hi, lovely lady. How are you? I'm fine. Na wanda tunaweza kuita na kwa majina. Naitwa Dorin Atenu. Yes. Give us CV one. Oh, Mskia CEO and founder. Uh -huh. I'm a program officer okay. in Zumari Africa, uh -huh. which is a community-based organization uh -huh. in Madare. Uh -huh. And I'm also a mental health champion. Mm -hmm. I'm a fellow at Nivishe Mental Health Training Initiative. Okay. And I'm also passionate about research, okay. especially in the public health. Oh. Mm. So, what is SHA? <laughs> SHA, SHA is an insurance on health. Uh -huh. And I, I don't have much information about Sha honestly. You see, akuna mtu ujua hii kitu ni nini, but muko true. But anyway, iyo ni makasiriko ya next week. Because if I start on it, I'll get annoyed. But Nisa. But meanwhile, the building has already changed name from NHIF. Eh? Washa paint. Rollout, bado. But painting, we have painted. Sawa. As a nation, we are doing well. Hashtag is... Empowerment Cafe. Stroke wine in the morning. All right. Uh... You said you're a mental health en enthusiast, enthusiast, one of those. What aspect of, what is mental health to you? So when we talk about mental health, mm -hmm. it's the state of wellness where mm -hmm. someone is functioning well physically, emotionally, mm -hmm. psychologically, and also able to reach his or her potential, mm -hmm. and also to give back to the community. Oh, yes. okay. So to say menaski and ja, in a fire, Nikasirike, has my mental health been affected? No. Mm -hmm. to, for it to be a mental health issue, mm -hmm. it must have been affecting your own personal life mm -hmm. and also your relationship with others. Mm -hmm. So it's something that imekoi mm kifanyika -hmm. for an extended period of time, maybe. Okay. And in affect peer, sana sana vile una relate, mm -hmm. maybe with yourself, mm -hmm. na peer environment yako, na mm -hmm. kwa hiyo environment. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. You, Lisa, you told me you are uh, about to be a nurse. To yes. To say maybe you're a, about to be a practitioner. Does mental health and reproductive health relate at any one point in manner and how? Yes, yes. It really relates. Mm -hmm. um, when uh, there's something that she has defined, mm. um, and uh, according to, let's say, WHO, when you're said to be healthy, mm -hmm. They say that it is a state of physical, mental, 
emotional and um, psychological well-being and not just the absence of disease. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh -huh. So when you talk about mental health, it's a very important aspect of health. And all these aspects, the physical, mental, social, they, interrelate, they are interrelated. Mm -hmm. Psychological, emotional, they are interrelated, mm -hmm. which means that they correlate. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, they are related. If mm -hmm. someone is not mentally well, they are not totally healthy. Mm -hmm. It's just not absence of disease, as in when you're physically sick. Mm -hmm. Even mental health, if you're not well mentally, mm -hmm. your health is compromised. And it correlates with many other aspects of your well-being. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. What is reproductive health? Reproductive health is um, any, like wellness that pertains to your sexual and reproductive aspects. And not just for women, mm -hmm. but also for men. So when we talk about um, reproductive health, it encompasses a lot of... Uh, aspects. Um, there's child birth, there's mortality of these children, mm -hmm. there's issues surrounding um, abortion, which is a very touchy topic. Actually, <laughs> that's why I was heading, but uh, hey, proceed. Yeah, it's a very touchy topic. Mm -hmm. um, there's um, issues surrounding reproductive health um, illnesses, or let's say things like reproductive um, system cancers, mm -hmm. There's so, so much. And um, also one thing that people usually ignore a lot, it's um, also about sex. Mm -hmm. It's also about pleasure. Mm -hmm. It's also about abuse, sexual mm -hmm. abuse. It's encompassing. It's such a wide topic. Mm -hmm. Yes. OK. Kabla mili ingize thoti yangu uono naati. Maoni? Yes, I would like to add more. Mm -hmm. to amesema, when you talk about reproductive health, also there's the aspect of autonomy. Mm -hmm. That is, Mimi, mm -hmm. I have the right here to make a decision. Maybe ni when I'll get a child, when to use contraceptives, mm -hmm. when not to use contraceptives. Mm -hmm. Issues to, do with, to deal with fertility. Mm -hmm. So it also in a, in a form peer part here, your reproductive health, mm -hmm. yes, which is very, very important. Now, you've all brought such tantalizing points. I d I'm not too sure where to pick up from, but let me start with contraceptives. Huh? And I'm only bringing this in, in this specific light because our previous guest, that is Miss, Mrs. Gold. You see, Miss, Mrs. Gold. We had a very candid conversation about you know, how she had come from a very, what you call a scale part, a very broken relationship, and I, she was being introduced as a secretary. Nando baby, to the girlfriend. Mm. <laughs> anyway, that's not the, anyway, yeah, that conversation a bit has shifted my intestines, but that's not the point. My point is, uh, uh, what happens, because we've said reproductive health is my right, eh? if I want to use contraceptives, when I will, or if I will give birth, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So what happens when you meet a partner, and I use partner very loosely, it's just the person you're going to engage with at the time, because they might not be really committed to you, or if they are, they say they, are, they don't do contraceptives. So what do you do then? Is it, has the right been taken away, or what, what's the next step after? Look, Lisa be looking at me like, oh, <gasps> eh, <laughs> it's true. Does it not happen? It happens. Because contraceptives not uh, just a pill, eh? See, even condoms are contraceptives. Yeah, they're, they're very... So what happens when you find a partner who says they do not partake? But the body is yours and the right is yours. So what do you do? Uh. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> Speak, Bwana. <laughs> I, I know I'm no bit, I promise. Uh -huh. um, first of all, this goes out to the men who are listening. Tuanze na Mufasa. Mm -hmm. um, Mufasa and uh, every other man on set mm -hmm. and every other man out there, mm -hmm. um, contraceptives are not a bad thing. Contraceptives mm -hmm. do not come to destroy mm -hmm. your sex life. Mm -hmm. Contraceptives mm -hmm. are a form of kujipanga. Mm -hmm. Contraceptives, they are pa like it's called family planning for a reason. Mm -hmm. Now, um, as a woman, mm -hmm. a woman reserves autonomy to her body, mm -hmm. a very pertinent point that uh, she highlighted. Mm -hmm. So you cannot tell a woman or you should not tell a woman 
that she cannot um, use family planning. Mm -hmm. That is uh, not respecting her autonomy mm. as an individual. I love what I heiko kwa Biblia. Um, it's not in the Bible people are using contraceptives. You see, we are guided by so many principles, mm -hmm. and the Bible is just one of them. Ah. How would family planning be in the Bible? Not even in the Bible per se, but or family planning, but contraceptives. Mm -hmm. We don't know what women did back then. Mm -hmm. There must have been one way or another for, like, for which they would use to avoid pregnancy. Mm -hmm. And number two, modern family planning mm -hmm. is what we have now. In short, we are changing with the times. Mm -hmm. You get with the times. Awezi kuwa unataka kuambia mtu that they should not um, use family planning. Mm -hmm. And I like to give this, um, like, something to relate to, like a little story, especially for the young girls. Mm -hmm. um, imagine there's a girl and there's a boy, mm -hmm. around 15, mm -hmm. 17, mm -hmm. 18, and there's a boy who's around the same age. Mm -hmm. Now, give this girl one stone to carry, and then tell her to run, and tell the boy to run as well. Now, somewhere along the way, add this girl another stone to carry. Mm -hmm. So this girl has two stones, mm -hmm. and they're all running. Mm -hmm. Now, if there's a finish line, mm -hmm. suppose there's a finish line, leave alone a finish line. Just imagine, who runs faster with the, the one with two stones or one stone, or the one who has, like, uh, no stone at all? Mm -hmm. um, well, who would run faster? If the stone is, is heavy and mm -hmm. I have to, or the lady has to, then the one with less weight is running fast. Now, um, there's something that the previous guest highlighted just as uh, we were coming in. Mm -hmm. She said that men were meant to do some things mm -hmm. and women were meant to do some things. What a man can do, sometimes a woman cannot do. And what a woman can do, a man cannot do. And the meant to do them. Yeah, uh -huh. like the burden of carrying a child, the burden of childbearing, whether we like it or not, it falls on women mm -hmm. and that is what the stone represents mm -hmm. it represents the responsibility that comes with carrying a pregnancy bearing a child and nurturing it mm -hmm. now if you nurture a child alone the stone becomes heavier mm -hmm. now when you tell a woman not to use family planning you are exposing her to the risk of pregnancy and in some cases you find that these are very young girls mm -hmm. who are maybe 15 to 18 and uh, by the way teenage pregnancy is Pregnancy for a teenager between the age of 10, actually 10 is not a teenager yet, but children as young as 9, 10 can get pregnant. So when you say that someone cannot use family planning, it is being unfair in my view, and it is not right. We need to get with the times. Look at the economic situation. Are you sure you're ready to carry that pregnancy to term, especially you as a man? Are you also sure you will be there? What if something happens? So really, it is much more complicated than just putting something in the body, than just um, telling someone you're not a proponent of family planning. Mm -hmm. It's much, much more. So for me, I think that is um, not respecting someone's autonomy. Mm -hmm. Yes, and um, it's a call for men to step up as well mm -hmm. and uh, support women mm -hmm. when it comes to matters of contraceptives. Okay. Maybe, Doreen, if you have something to add on, as I also ask, would you, in good faith, advise someone who is under 18 to use contraceptives? In good faith? Like, kitu. First of all, ata, your brain has not finished developing, Misawa, but we are not going games God, But we are saying, if you must, then be safe. In good faith, would you advocate for contraceptives? someone, a young lady who is under 18? Honestly, uh, I don't think so. For under 18, I think it's, it's very tricky for someone to be using contraceptives at that time. But I know things are changing and we grew up differently. So for me, honestly, I, I wouldn't advocate for an under 18 person. Mm -hmm. Yes. Is it because of health? issues that it, the earlier you start the, m the more frequent you use them it will come to affect you or is it a moral issue it's a moral issue a personal issue mm -hmm. a personal conviction issue yes okay well, lisa is ready with the science 
plant knowledge in mind, Bana. Tell us, would you in good faith advocate for contraceptives for someone, a young girl, under the age of 18? Um, on no, a normal... No, squeezy, 18. I see people who are younger than me looking a lot older than me. They go, hey, <laughs> hey, uh, <laughs> hey, hey. Um, So, on a normal day, I would not advocate for a child under 18 mm -hmm. um, using family planning. But also, there's emerging issues, there's current trends, mm -hmm. and honestly, sometimes you need to get off the moral high horse mm -hmm. to root it back to reality. Uh -huh. um, You're very logical. Yes. Objective, yeah. mm -hmm. Sometimes we need to get off the moral high horse. Mm -hmm. We cannot turn our heads and pretend that these kids are not engaging in sex before mm -hmm. 18. One. And two, let us now look at Kenya. We are guided by the Bible and the Constitution and all. Even if you look at the framework that mm -hmm. um, allows for sexual education in Kenya, mm -hmm. it's very um, dismissive of teenagers. Mm -hmm. We might say, as you said, that teenagers are not yet fully developed. But you see, kuna parts of the brains are in a develop once you hit puberty mm -hmm. or adolescence, as you say. And uh, I think these are also important parts of the brain. So we cannot say that it's just contraceptive use, but for me, that use of contraceptives, sometimes it would be appropriate, mm -hmm. one. And two, um, it should come with other solutions, mm -hmm. hand in hand. You cannot be giving a child contraceptives and not educating them about sex. Mm -hmm. And by the way, when you talk about sex education, we do not mean that you bombard a child who's 10 or 12 mm -hmm with all this information about sex at once. There's something called age-appropriate education. Okay. So when a child is young, maybe five, six, mm -hmm. you can talk to them about bullying. Mm -hmm. You can talk to them about treating people well. Mm -hmm. As they get older, you can talk to them about sexual abuse, like around 10, 12. As they get older, now you can start introducing the idea of how to form relationships, mm -hmm. and then sex, safe sex, evo, evo. Now, when you do this, people usually think that sexual education is telling a child to basically go have sex. Mm -hmm. That's not true. Usually, um, when you educate children about sex, they're likely to like have their sexual debut mm -hmm. a little later in life. <laughs> debut? <So. laughs> that was so well put. Uh -huh. <laughs> a little bit later in life. Uh -huh. And also, <laughs> they are likely to practice safe sex when they eventually start to have sex. Mm -hmm. So education is power. And that applies to sexual education as well. Now, that would eliminate the need for us to even start using contraceptives early because in many cases it means that the child will start engaging in sex a little later. Now, if you do not give children age-appropriate sex education, unapata wanaeza kuwa um, a bit less, um, they will go out and explore because that's what children do. There's an age watoto wakifika, ukiwambio sifanye, iyo ndio sasa wanataka kufanya. Eh, I want to find out why mm. you're telling me this thing all of a sudden and mm. you're dissuading me. Mm -hmm. So it's better to start early, appropriately, so that even you as a parent, unako aware. And if unawana that your child is heading in the wrong direction, I'm sorry, but parents, I think it's, it may be time for you to now come in with these interventions. Mm -hmm. Yes, such as family planning. Okay. Hey, okay. I like how she said, uh, Doreen, Lakini suto etu maoni kwanza kabla. Rin is not in the same page with Lisa, but I think uh, as far as knowledge is is concerned, I can see you agree. Ni apo tu kwa moral high horse ni hampatani. But would you have liked to echo or dispute? I would like to echo on that. Mm -hmm. Yes, especially on the part of age appropriate education. Mm -hmm. Education, it's very very important mm -hmm. for these children or teenagers to have this information. Bileto amesema, education is, information is power. Mm -hmm. So I think with the correct information, they have the right to make their own decision. Mm -hmm. I have no problem with someone accessing contraceptives. It's only that due to my own personal, what do I say, reservations or convictions, mm -hmm. I will not advocate for it. Mm -hmm. But if that is the way, even your vitus in a work, mm -hmm. then it's okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So we are saying we are ready for... La, assuming you have a, a young cousin, they're okay, that they'll be safe coming to you and saying, eh, sunibaye nini, anenda kuona nani, 
tumefunga shule. Wanafanya exam so mimi niko inside ngine. Mm. Na mnijibu usijali. We stop side I me bana. This is this is are we not are they not doing case is right now? They are. They do. So that means wengine wako nyumba, wako nyumbani. Wako na holiday ya how many weeks? Oh, a lot of. What are they doing? What are they doing? They are wafanyi homework. So what are they doing if they are not interacting? And this interaction, I love you now. This is what I wanted to ask also. Put hand in hand with what Lisa said. Eh? If you, parents, you see, first of all, I, I do not like to call out parents because I'm old enough to be a parent myself. So what I need to Parents really do not spend most of the time or their time with the children. They are going to be exposed. You're either in school, but the interaction between parents and children is, is becoming less and less even, let's say. Mzazi amechoka, hajisiki kusumbwana, anamutuma kwa anko yake na anti yake wakayo kwa kidogo wiki mbili, arudi. It's already time to go back to school. So when are you going to tell that your child has become different? Just the other day I was talking to someone who, who had, what? She was seven months pregnant before her sister, who she's close with, found out. And she was what? 316. Hey, imagine no mekako wazazi. Siati, you are anywhere else. Nikuva tungu obagi. Now what helped her? She was petite and she was not overflowing. Eh, yeah. So, uh -huh. Form? <laughs> so, I think parents... One of who are free and open mm -hmm. to discuss these Sangabi. issues, but I know I know it's tricky. <laughs> but it's a bidi. Sometimes uh -huh. it's a bidi because ukiwa uh -huh. chayivo. What I, what I learned from the society, um, from their peers, you know na. Now what I learned from their peers, just like Lisa was saying, mm -hmm. it's a kind of story of experiment. Mm -hmm. Or also maybe one is a look for ways maybe to enroll kwa easy interventions. Vile Lisa likuwa na sema. Church is in a running programs, or these other organizations, CBOs, co community, they do run programs for adolescents. So, me, I can advocate for that. Mm -hmm. Maybe they can go for those sessions, mm -hmm. we interact in our land. Mm -hmm. But I, it's a very, it's a big challenge for parents because mm -hmm. you can the economic situation. Unataka kutafuta, unataka urudi nyumbani, you have a lot of things mm -hmm. za kufanya. So, sometimes unakosa your time. But, Pia na wa advice like at least pia some time kuka na mtu yuwako mm -hmm. and start having this conversation. Kuwafanya wakwe free na wewe. Usikuwe so strict mm -hmm. in that the child easy to express ata kwako mm -hmm. in case ya kuna need yoyote. Mm -hmm. Yes. I, I'm, I'm liking that you brought that up and let me throw it back to Lisa. Mm -hmm. Kidogo nda, nda, natika kufinya lakini ye ni kama hata sikia auchu wende utasikia so hata ni mfinye kwanza alafu you can, you can. <laughs> <laughs> you can chip in, okay? All right, so I will revert to my previous guest. Mrs. Gold told us this particular abusive relationship she got into, uh, and it was physical abuse, psychological, all kinds of things, eh? Just, anyway. Uyu banake walituana kanisa. Nisa wa? Was a church boy. Vocalist, oh, kanisa, we are just praising, and then you see that you see your husband or your crush just some eh, mapema kupanga viti, my guy. Eh, people are thinking, oh, very safe. No, you're going to see the love of your life, or hopefully the future love of your life. So, really, in whose hands are we safe? And then we mix it in with I understand that maybe perhaps there's a generation of parents that do not talk to their children simply because they do not know how. No, no. It's not that they, they were sat down and, and given the talk. It's not mm -hmm. that someone was free with them. So expecting, it's like regurgitating when you haven't eaten. You know, mm -hmm. what you give, what you give you out is yeah. what you have inside. So if you, do, you can't show love if you've never been loved before. If you do not know what mm -hmm. love is, you, I cannot <coughs> expect you to give love to me. So that disconnect, Meanwhile, hospital. I'm not condemning anyone or anything. You find all sorts of characters in there. Nisawa. Kanisa ni kama hospital? Hospital ikona nurse, ikona patient ako ICU. Ikona daktari, kuna patient tu akona tu homa. Kuna patient, amekujia tu dawa, hakuna shida yake. Kuna kuna mtu anakuja ku visit mugonjwa ni sawa eh so there's all sorts of just make sure you understand discernment how do we 
make sure reproductive health matters to do with our bodies, eh? that, that we don't leave it to chance, we don't let someone else tell us about our bodies, but they will skew the information, you understand? Mm -hmm. how, do we, how do we do that? Uh, let's start with the issue of parents. Um, you see, when you decide to become a parent, it's a commitment. And um, I think that it does not stop simply because the economic situation, it may go hard. Mm. It does not stop because now you think mtoto wako may grow. And um, Kenyans have this thing, or maybe it's an African culture where we let go of our children as they start approaching their teens, mm. mid teens, once they young adults up to 18. Mm -hmm. Unapata parents at that point, sometimes who are wananza kukua neglectful, and they wouldn't see it as being neglectful. Yes, I'm a kwa mtu mkubwa. Anaenda shule, mm. fizi meongezeka, lazima ntafte fees. Lazima akule. So your parent will tell you that it's now your responsibility to take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. But you see, at this point, it's where teenagers need a lot of guidance. So it's not going to be an excuse at his situations in a force. And I understand what you are trying to say, that we cannot pour from an empty cup. Mm. But once you become an adult, Pia, it's on you to go out and learn what's right. If you are not loved, you have to go find out what love is. What do you mean? Mm, wow. <laughs> uh -huh. What do you mean? What do you mean you can't teach them because you are not taught? Now you know. What do you know it for if you, you know cannot know the transfer? Background. transfer. Mm -hmm. Yes. And we cannot be here to tell our children we are the poor background. Mm -hmm. Mara o, we are the ones who are not given love. To make kubali, lakini sasa we ni mtumkubwa. Go out there, find out what's right. <laughs> <laughs> and come and pour into your child. Mm -hmm. Your child is your nikama protege yako. That is, that is a better version of you. If I have a child, that's Lisa 2.0. Mm -hmm. Uyo siyo, just that child. Mm -hmm. uh? So, it's very important for parents to really, really, really come strongly for their kids. Come out strongly for your kids. Nobody is going to do that for you. If you cannot support your kids, nobody will. Mm -hmm. And by the way, the society has a way of reflecting who you are to your child. The society has a way, from teachers to people outside, how do you think abusers support kids? Mm -hmm. They know somehow that there's a disconnect somewhere. Wanajua mama u mtoto hamuangaliangi sa zote. Ama anajua u mtoto kwao hapati the necessities. Mm -hmm. they, they map out. And abusers are watokangi mbali. Mm -hmm. They don't come from far. They are usually people within the household. If you've, I, I think you've worked with um, rape victims. And is it true if I say that most of the rape cases were watu within the family? Yes. And these uncles abuse children repeatedly. Not one child, not two children, not three. In the same family. And because nobody stops them, which is a whole other issue, but because nobody stops them, unapata that they continue. The world has a way of reflecting how you love your child onto that child. If you're not keen, someone will take advantage. So I understand that it's difficult, but also it is upon you. And then um, on the issue of religion, um, I do not like to touch on religion very much because sometimes I become a bit uh, too, I don't know whether I'm still logical, but in my view, I think that kuna correlation or an intersection ya sexual abuse and uh, religion. And um, the worst part is, <coughs> Sorry, that um, people will use religion mm. to affirm their bad actions. Unaona? You see, mtu ataenda kanisa, na because, let's say, a girl or a boy, mm. let's talk about boys because we talk about girls so much. Mm. A boy goes to a priest mm -hmm. and tells the priest about a problem they have at home. Now, in I don't know, I don't remember which state it is, but currently, I think kuna pahali in the U.S. where the sexual abuse claims zenye zimepelekwa court mm -hmm. against the Catholic Church mm -hmm. zinafika 1.5 billion dollars. They are trying to settle at 800 million walipe hawa victims. And that is one state watu kama over 1,000 wamekua abused. Imagine the people who do not report. Imagine the people in other states. Imagine the statistics in the entire world. Mm -hmm. 
when I think about things like those, I become angry. Naanza kukasirika na vizuri kuwa na makasiriko. Now, a lot of people take advantage of the church. They take advantage of these fundamental principles. Kama a woman is supposed to be submissive. This issue of conjugal rights. Mm -hmm. And they institute very ugly things. And uh, people say marital rape is supposed, not supposed to be an issue. But I think it's an issue. People say that they justify. They'll find a way. And I'm sure you people in this room know mm -hmm. that somehow people, there are people who do that repeatedly. They manipulate the scriptures to suit their narrative. Mm -hmm. And also, in many churches, children are abused. They are abused by people they trust. Mm -hmm. They are abused by people their parents trust. They are abused constantly. And people turn a blind eye. Even if you look very well, if you are in high school, in a girls' boarding school, I'm sure Ukiangalia vizuri unapata kuna klaji mwingine, mm -hmm. alikuwa na behave funny na watoto wasichana. Mm -hmm. And it's, it happens in many schools. Mm -hmm. I was in a school in Nyanza, mm -hmm. Nikiwa Primary. Mm -hmm. And um, it was so many years later, mm -hmm. in my late 20s, I came to realize that this teacher would stand in a corner mm -hmm. on his duty. Na alikuwa napenda kwa on duty sana. Mm -hmm. Alikuwa nasmama kwa corner, and then he'd look at girls. We just, <laughs> we really must have to end it here. We've got run a bit past our time, but Doreen and Lisa, please, I welcome you to come back next week. You see where you've stopped? We are going to start from there, part two. It's okay, because there's so much we haven't touched on. Doreen has not given her piece yet, and she's just been, get ready, get ready, get ready. So we'll come back definitely for that. But in the meantime, thank you so very much. I'm very sorry for interrupting. You're still the Kwamoto. Tutamaliza situkienda. At Y5 on Facebook, Y5 for channel on X, Y5 for underscore channel on Z Graham. Thank you for staying with me. Please, I implore you to please keep it channel Y254. I'll see you when I see you. Have a good day. Thank you.